Hello, good evening, and welcome to my humble model, Rowie, Bedstead Junction. Now, uh, tonight we're going to be talking a little bit about um, diesel locomotives, various diesel locomotives. And the first we've got on the tracks here tonight is an Airfix Class 31. Okay, um, see all the details of it there, just in case you ever want to look one up. Okay, Class 31 1 diesel locomotive in BR Green livery. Now, there is a slight problem with Airfix with Airfix models, okay? Not serious, and what they had is that they had their own kind of coupling. Okay? And it can be problematic with certain carriages and things. I had to change the uh <coughs> even change out the couplings on my auto coaches so that they can um, connect with the D type couplings on my um on my Daffle locomotives. I do the same with thing here. Oh look, get that to focus if I can. Very, very small NEM type coupling. In fact, I don't think it's even compatible with the NEM type coupling. Uh, a bit blurry there, but uh, you get you get the picture. There you go. Um, so what I've done, you can actually unclip these uh, couplings, and you can actually swap them over if you want to for the larger, more conventional D type coupling, which for me is desirable. Because it helps me to actually connect it to the, my coaches over there, which have got the larger D-type coupling. Okay, you can actually buy these in um, from eBay or anywhere like that, and um, you can see where the pegs in there. See, you need pegs like this, like where they, where they actually locate. See the shape of the peg. Okay, so not like an M-type coupling. Okay, so we've done that. We swap this for the D-type coupling, and that will enable you, especially with uh, a lot of the Airfix stock. Now I couldn't get these um, to couple together with my carriages, so we're going to see what, how we are now with it, and then we're going to run it for a little while. Class thirty one. Here we go. So let's just bring those little bits closer together. And we'll just see how we get on. Now these are nice models actually, I mean they could still be put airfix models, I mean, unless you want to go with DCC, okay, which is uh, which I think still can be converted, there is a way, but um, they don't have, obviously have DCC compatible sockets or anything, but if you're going to be sticking with DC, you'll probably find you've got a chance of getting quite a nice little bargain with some of these airfix ones. Um, there's a... a, a a YouTuber I came across uh, recently called Double O Heaven, okay, and uh, he actually picked up um, an Airfix Royal Scott um, untested for £20. Okay, so he got a working locomotive for £20. They said it was untested, but when he tried it on the tracks, it worked. But he might need a little service. But if you have a look, this is a very nice winner, this. I think an Airfix Class 31. They could be seen on the western region of British Rail, again, over a, a, a lot of the system. And this one is, in fact, in BR Green. Now, judging by the date of this, I mean, uh, when you look underneath, it says um, Airfix Hobbies, 1975, okay, 1975. Now, I probably bought this in the mid-1990s, so that's why I did a lot of my uh, modern railway collecting. And at the time, I put this one up for the pretty sum of twenty pounds. Box. Now, one minute tip: if you want to, what I would do is, if you're going to change the coupling, so like, like I've just done, keep the old coupling, sort of tape it into the box or something, so just in case you ever decide to go back again to the, to the previous coupling. But as you see now, I've got a very nice coupling here, and it's running around perfectly well. Putting three Hornby coaches. Now, the, the, the old Airfix, I think some of them went over to Dapol. Um, some of the designs went to, as far as I'm aware, to people like Mainline. And even Hornby, I mean, they, they, they live, the Airfix models do live on. But it's a very, very nice locomotive, quite nicely detailed. I mean, for its time, you might remember this is the 1970s now. And in fact, in many ways, Airfix were ahead of their time. You 
can still pick up the right traction tyres for it if the traction tyres should go a bit funny because obviously that's a risk we're going to take with, with uh, some of these locomotives uh, of a certain age and I've changed the traction tyres on uh, not on this one but certainly on some of my Lima uh, ones I've got because they, they were about 15-20 years old they see running perfectly well around my track now In fact, I'm going to have a little sneaky look. Well, while you're watching this uh, train fly around the tracks here, well, let's watch it go through the other station, shall we? For a while. Zoom in a bit. So we can get a nice view of it running through our station there. There's our expectant passengers waiting. Crikey. Well, there's one like mine on eBay at the moment, uh, £15. Pounds. Plus 31. Another one here, box. £21, pounds, but they've got three days to go on eBay. So these can certainly be picked up at what would seem to be quite a good price. And they're in various liveries too. So for those of you, I mean, I was, it just got me thinking because we, I was looking at the new Hush Hush, £230, and, it, and if you're a collector, I think they're being sold out on limited editions now, aren't they, a lot of these, like General Steam Navigation was from Hornby, um, you're talking about well over £200 for some locomotives, sometimes £500 now for some things, I think the new um, APT set £500, that, you know, some of us are thinking, well, you know, are, are there still possibilities out there for us and um, you know one of these you can pick up as long as you're not that worried about the DCC you've got a, a perfectly good locomotive going around here which we still pick up for about 20 odd pounds what bad is it okay so what I'm going to do is we're going to zoom out just a little bit I'm going to take this one into the station because we're going to be looking at the next locomotive now Now you can expect these uh, models to be slightly noisier than the modern offerings. I mean, that is going to be a given, isn't it, really? You're talking about technology of 1975. Okay, that's when these were, were, uh, were came, came out. Okay, so we'll just have a quick change of points. But I hope you agree, quite a nice model. We'll have, we'll have a, look at, a little look at her when she's into the station as well. Right, so let's see how we go. What we're going to do is a quick points test, obviously, as well. Okay, so there it is, and it's in, in the station, and the, and the uh, locomotive uh, just behind it is a Lima um, Class 42 Warship Druid. Okay, so our Class um, class 31 is now pulled into the station, and we'll have a little look at our, our Lima uh, Druid in just a moment uh, next. Now we just need a quick change of points. And we'll be away. So stop at the signal and we're out on the main line. The 
class 42 warship. Now these are, uh, a lot of these locomotives, like the class 31s and the warships, all came under the plans for the modernisation of British Railways. And um, the di di these were diesel hydraulics, so the class 31 the diesel electric, this is a diesel hydraulic uh, lo locomotive. So a different kind of transmission, and it was built to a German design. Now I bought this locomotive in the uh, in the mid 1990s. Now as far as I can can gather from the information I've got online, this one was released in about 1995 by Lima, and uh, Lima ceased uh, the modern railway in this um, business in about 2004. And in fact, they're now taken over by Hornby, and these actually live on in the Hornby Railroad range. I'm pretty certain they're using the the, uh, the body shells for the Hornby Railroad range. Uh, this is a um, this one is called Druid. Uh, they were named after certain warships. And in my opinion, it's a very nice model. I mean, I, I liked it from the second from the day I bought it. I bought this in a shop called Antics in Bristol, and I paid thirty-one pound forty-nine, I think for it, back in the mid 1990s, obviously uh, price have gone up quite uh, a lot since then. Now I think you can get the Hornby Railroad version of a warship when they do quote come up for about £80. Pounds. Are they worth getting? Definitely, the warship the a lovely locomotive. Um, they were built to replace uh, the steam engines and uh, on the western region of British Rail at least uh, steam actually um, ceased on March of 6, 1966. It was intended, uh, D-Day or Diesel Day was intended to be the end of 1965, but the Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway, which was under the control of the Western Region of British Rail, had to continue on a little bit longer uh, because of a problem, I think, with the replacement bus service. There were various other wranglings. And then these... Um, these came out, I think, in the late 1950s, early 1960s, and they were all withdrawn in the early 1970s. They were deemed to be non-standard by British Railways, and um, everything was uh, turned over to diesel electrics. It was based on a German uh, design of the V200. Okay, so... It's going to be a little bit noisier than, than a, a modern offering, like I say, but um, again, probably you can pick these up quite reasonable, I would guess. I'm going to have another, uh, we'll, have a, we'll, have a, we'll have a little crappy bit while we're here. Got smartphones before, isn't it? Uh, Lima Warship uh, got a few days ago on it. It's £17.77. Went here for £49.99. Box. Looks in great condition. £49.99. So it looks like you're probably paying about like £50 for one of these, roughly. You can end up paying less if it's unboxed, of course. But again, you've got yourself a nice locomotive whether you're going to buy one of the Lima versions or the Hornby Railway version. Very smart. It's putting three uh, mainline coaches. Well, Replica Railway's on mainline. And I think I picked up the mainline brake um, coaches, made this uh, little uh, rake of coaches uh, complete. I think for less than £10. Boxed. So the, there are bargains out there. Of course, we're on a, we're on a diesel night tonight. It's Saturday night. And what I'm going to do is we're going to run this one in a minute because we're going to be looking at uh, another model quite shortly. And it's going to be another Lima.
Okay, so we'll just have one more uh, run around the tracks. I hope you're enjoying watching these uh, trees go round around my track. Uh, this is a six foot by four foot layout, and it's about as big as I can go in this house. Seriously, I've, I've tried everything. I've, I've uh, measured and measured and tried and tried, and uh, this is and it's on my bed at the moment. Of course, you can see why it was why it's called Bedstead Junction. We'll zoom right out there. Okay, we'll have a quick change of points, and our driver is patiently now waiting at the signal for it to come into the station and drop off all, all the uh, Pappy Holiday Makers. Right, so when we come... Over the points. Yep, quite easy. Whoa, here we go. That wasn't bad coming into the station like that. Very nice indeed. Quite good, quite not re quite reasonable control on this as well. I mean, it's a. Uh, a little bit noisy, of course, you can hear the motor there going, but very, very nice. I think it's got like a ring foot type motor in it, this particular one, the the, uh, the Lima. Again, you'll probably agree, very, very smart looking locomotive. So that's the Class 31 and the warship both seen together there. Now we're going to be going over to our, what I call my little branch line stations, which are over there, just on the other side of the layout. And the first thing we'll be looking at is a great western rail car. Let's just uh, bring the camera across so we can see what we're looking at. We'll zoom, in, zoom right in so we can uh, see her there. There she is. GWR rail car in green, they are green. Actually comes at the station. Again rolling over the points quite well. And we'll just uh, take it back just a little bit more. Now these Could be seen on quite a few places in the Bristol region, in the Bristol area, and it's certainly in places I never knew they, they went. Uh, and we'll go into this in just a moment. I think these were designed in the 1930s, these uh, diesel rail cars, and they could be seen everywhere on main lines, branch lines. Um, they were running a, at one point, they were running a fast service from uh, Cardiff to Birmingham. Um, they can be seen on branch lines like the Cheddar Valley Line. And for those of you who, who, who can remember the uh, the Midland Railway Line that ran from Magnetsfield to Bath Green Park, well, these were even running on a service that went from Bristol Temple Mead to Bath Green Park. So that line, which ran from um, Magnetsfield into Bath Green Park, it wasn't always exclusively Midland. I always thought it was. Now, obviously, things changed a lot in, I think, in about 1959 when the uh, Western Region of British Rail took over the uh, certain parts of the uh, former Midland Railway system, uh, including the, um, the Magnusville branch, and certainly quite a few uh, different um, Diesels could be seen on the Mangosville branch towards the end of its uh, existence. Okay, so that's our... And again, like I say, it's a Lima, one by Lima. I think it's quite a smooth runner, in my opinion. I mean, it, it goes quite well. Uh, bear in mind that a lot of these locomotives were sat in my attic for a long time. Because I couldn't run my railway for across the week, like I say, in lack of space. But anyway, that's another story. Uh, Lima things... Always came with 
you normally in these silver type boxes like this so a nice little box very little information on them actually and then just it tells you what's uh, what's in the box Lima rail car green that's all it tells you all the information it gives you on a serial number there but um, very nice Cheddar Valley Lines, another place that these could be seen on. So again, if you're, if you're modelling from the Western region of British Rail, or the former GWR region, or even, you know, these could even be seen venturing into parts of the Midland region. And certainly the Bristol region is very, very interesting because the Midland, the Midland Railway did have uh, running power into Bristol type of meets. And so, if you're going to be modelling the Bristol area, you could quite leg legitimately include either Midland or Great Western on, on your layout. Okay, so what we're going to do then, we'll be bringing her in in just a moment and we have a look at an another uh, rail car or DMU as they call them, diesel, diesel multiple units this is going to be the next one. These can be bought actually uh, they, they come in various liveries, even with Lima. Uh, they, they come in uh, the GWR livery, or they come in uh, parcel livery as well. And there's one here on eBay for £44.99, the diesel, diesel rail car, in, uh, in chocolate and cream uh, livery. So that is uh, added to my watch list. <laughs> Very tempting. Could well be going with this. Yes. Very, very tempting. So, I mean, if you. Okay, so again, these can be got for a very, a very reasonable price. Now, if, I mean, if you're looking at the price of locomotives today, I mean, there's some are going, like the same price are skyrocketing. And as long as you're, like I say, if you want to be just, um, don't mind running on DC, then a lot of these locomotives can represent a, a perfectly good bargain for you and a good, a good option. So we're going to run her in now. We've been to our... Uh, our very little destinations now, so we'll just uh, now I think these were drawn in the late 1950s, early 1960s, and they were replaced by what's coming on next. In fact, what's going to be seeing next uh, represented the replacement for quite a few uh, items on uh, on our railways, the DMU. Okay, so these are basically the forerunner of the DMU, these um, these rail cars. They'll bring them into a station a bit more, that's it. Perfect. Okay, so just have a quick change of points now. And the next locomotive we're looking at, again, is by Lima. And it's a class 121, nicknamed the Bubble Car. Now, I think they were nicknamed Bubble Cars very much because of their um, the shape of the cabs. Uh, some of you might be uh, of a certain age where you remember bubble cars. They were basically what people bought in droves um, until the Mini came along. Cars like the Mini became available to the public. Bubble cars usually have three wheels. Obviously that's... Uh, that, but the cab, I think, resembled a bubble car. That's why they were called bubble cars. Um, these can be seen, <coughs> certainly on the western region of British Rail, from about 1960 onwards, in fact, these replaced uh, the 14 double X's and the auto uh, coaches on the on the Cleveland branch and uh, many other branches too. Uh, there were a lot of high hopes actually attached to these diesel multiple units. Um, I mean, they were probably going to be the saviour of the branch line, but unfortunately, it wasn't to be in many ways. Because the Beeching reports came came around, it was commissioned in 1963, 
and then that meant that a lot of lines were closed from about the mid 1960s onwards into the 1970s. Um, they could be seen on the Bridport branch in uh, Dorset. So, if any of you are thinking about the, um, the, the old Bridport branch or anything made in Newton, they were on there. Uh, they were seen, um, I think, in Buckinghamshire as well, up until the early 2000s. So, a very, very versatile locomotive. And uh, as they were displaced from various uh, railways that were being closed, they were soon being moved on to other railways to be used there. Again, they're going to be a little bit more, um, a little bit more noisy than uh, the modern offerings, but that's to be expected, isn't it? You know, can't be helped. Well, I think there's a dapple version of this out uh, now, so so you, if you want to get the modern version of these, you certainly can. Uh, tonight I've been looking at the price of these because I think it's important for you to know that there is a uh, certainly if you're trying to add to your little collection there's locomotives out there available to you at a reasonable price Mm. Yeah, these bubble cars can be seen in various uh, guises. Crikey, it's only what, £75 for a mine. No bids on it yet. Well, I'm not surprised at that price. No, no, they want £70, maybe they are that price. But it seems like these kind of run at a kind of a premium. There's one here, class 121 in uh, Blatchley. Oh, DCC fitted, so uh, these can be DCC fitted. That's a starting bid of £44. So, again, maybe not so not quite as cheap as some of the others, but they stand, can still be obtained for a reasonable price. Uh, I don't know if Hornby do a class 121. But again, they're, they're definitely worthy of consideration, especially if you're modelling a branch line. You know, obviously, what you've got there is a self contained train. You don't have to worry about a locomotive and a carriage, uh, you've got the whole thing rolled into one. But well, these seem to be still fetching quite a, re quite a reasonably good price. In fact, I think this one, I, I, I can't remember when I actually bought this, but towards the end of uh, Le Lima's existence, they came up with something called the Lima Collection. And certainly a certain amount of rolling stock and uh, engines were like this. And my locomotive diesel class 121 with BR Green Whiskers were part of the range called the Lima Collection. Back in the days, I paid £40.49 for mine. It looks like this was a Lima a limited edition model, apparently. Very, very nice. So imagine one of these, say, for example, going along into the Bridport branch, into Bridport for Made in Newton, or going from Yatton to Clevedon, or um, running in Buckinghamshire. These they, were given good, good service. Where, where, wherever they ran. Okay, so what I'm going to do, we're going to draw things a halt now. Um, if you like what you see, press the like button, subscribe, don't cost you anything to subscribe, and press that bell so you, um, it, you, you can be made aware of when I'm coming out with new videos. And thank you very, very much for watching and thank you for your interest. And I shall bid you farewell and good night. Thank you.